Hello, I'm Stefan Graeber, the project leader for LexD, and today I'd like to take a look at third-party third party integrations with LexD. Specifically, uh, for this video, we're going to be looking at Ansible. Ansible is probably the most um, common DevOps tool these days. It can be used to deploy and manage and to some extent maintain um, workloads across many um, many different systems on many different operating systems and Linux distributions and, and has a lot of different plugins to to maintain a lot of different things. In the case of LexD, there are four plugins that interact with LexD. One is a connection plugin, so effectively an alternative to SSH, uh, which uses the LexD API to access instances and put, run commands or transfer files in and out of them. Then there is a plugin that connects with LexD and pulls the list of all instances into the Ansible inventory. There's also a plugin that lets you create, delete, and update configuration for LexD containers. And lastly, a plugin that lets you update LexD profiles uh, from Ansible. For this video, I'm just going to be focusing on the first one. Um, it's because it's possibly the most basic, but also the, the, the most feature complete uh, of the bunch. It's the other three, in my experience, don't currently deal with a lot of the things I like to use in my demos. Um, they don't really support projects. They don't play super well with remotes. Um, whereas the first one um, works just fine. So going to be focusing on that and seeing kinda, you know, what's possible with it at this point. So switching over to a terminal, I'm in an empty directory on a system, uh, on my local system. What we need to do here is uh, actually, well, first create a few instances that can be used from Ansible and then set up Ansible to, to deploy something on them. So I'm in an empty LexD project. So I'm just going to be launching two instances. One is going to be an Ubuntu 2004 container called C1. And the other will be a virtual machine, also Ubuntu 2004. So I'm calling that V1. All right. Um, now, the best, uh, depending on the version of Ansible you, you might be running, uh, you may need to refresh the community general plugin, which includes the, the connection plugin for LexD. That's because uh, specifically remotes and projects um, have only been added to Ansible about a year ago. And some Linux distributions, the one I'm using here included, uh, can be a tiny bit behind and so need an update. For that, you can use Ansible Galaxy and then do an install of community.general. Because it's bundled with Ansible, you actually need to do dash F for force so that it will re-download it and download the latest version of it. That doesn't take particularly long. And after that, regardless of the version of Ansible you might be running, you're going to have the latest version of all the general plugins. In this case, version 4.0, which is going to be in for this particular demo, including all we need for LexD. All right. So back to our empty directory. The first thing I'm going to be doing is create an ansible.config file. And in there, I'm going to be specifying that I want my inventory to be hosts.yaml. This will get Ansible to look at a host.yaml file within that directory instead of looking for it's a Ansible hosts INI file. Uh, as it would by default. I'm not super fond of Ansible having system-wide configuration like that. I much prefer having everything in the same directory, which is why I'm doing, doing it this way. I also prefer the YAML format for the, um, for the inventory. It's easier to, to make a, a tree of groups. That makes sense to me. So I'm going to be creating that file now and just create the basic tree. So starting at all and then applying some variables that will apply to everything inside of this deployment. So Ansible connection. This overrides the uh, default connection plugin of Ansible, which is normally SSH and tells it to use LexD instead. Now, because LexC exec will always get you root, uh, there's no point in Ansible uh, assuming it's going to be a different user. 
And lastly, because it's always root, there's no point in using sudo to become root. So that's what that config does. Then let's add some children. So we're going to be creating one child node called local for the, the local containers and some more variables there. So there's Ansible, Lexte, Remote, and we want to use the default remote, the local remote, and then Ansible, Lexte, Project, and in this case, my project is called Demo. And then defining the instances, we've got C1 and V1, and that's it. Saving that, Ansible, Inventory, dash dash tree, should show us, oops, uh, uh, sorry, not tree, graph will show us that local group with C1 and V1 inside it. Okay, now we need to actually have something to deploy. So let's gonna, let's create a playbook, let's call it demo.yaml with a play called setup Apache, which will run on everything and has a couple of tasks. The first one would be install the Apache package. This is going to be done through apt. The package is called Apache2, and we want it to be in the state present. And then make sure uh, Apache is running. And it's going to be done through systemd. The unit is called Apache2.service, and the state we'd like it to be in is started. Save that. And then run Ansible playbook with the file. And I'm going to be limiting it to just that local group. Right now, that's the only thing I've got in my inventory, but that might be, uh, that kind of shows how to restrict the, the scope of uh, the deployment. So it first went to, uh, in both instances and fetched some uh, system information, like network, uh, network information, um, what OS it's running, a bunch of other things. To put that into the um, the facts that are then exposed to Ansible um, plays and plugins, and then it deployed Apache and made sure it's running, and we're done. So if we go inside of C1, you can see Apache is running here, and going into V1. Also, this is a bit longer because it's a virtual machine, but same thing. Apache can be seen as running in this instance. That's pretty much the basic for just deploying a service and making sure it's running um, against LexD through Ansible. No need to like create SSH keys or set up any of that stuff, it just works. Uh, so long as you've got the LXC command line tool configured to, to access the right thing, everything just works out. Now to look at um, interacting with remote LexD systems, I've got a Raspberry Pi here. Uh, which I'll quickly configure. So let's just do standard everything. So just enter for pretty much everything except uh, the question asking whether we want it to listen to the network because we do need it on the network. So just pick the defaults there, enter a password, and we're done. Now I need the IP address and I need to add it to my local system. With that done, I can now do, I can remotely list what's running on it, which is nothing. And now let's get ourselves a couple of instances on there. So let's create R5 C2 as Ubuntu 24. So that's gonna be still Ubuntu 24, but this time running on ARM 64 bit. And then to change things up a bit with the last instance, going to be using Debian Buster, also on the Raspberry Pi 64-bit. So Debian Buster, I want it to call C3. Uh, there's one small catch with the Debian instances, um, which is that they don't um, they don't include Python 3 out of the box. So that needs to be that needs to be added prior to being able to use them through Ansible. Otherwise, Ansible will fail. So you just go in the instance with LXC exec and then install Python 3. Give it a few seconds to install and then we'll be all set. All right. 
right? And running the playbook again. So if I run with local, it's just gonna be checking the existing two instances and not not see anything interesting. Okay. There we go. Um, but now we can go and add the Raspberry Pi to the inventory. So I'm gonna be doing a new node here called RPI in the variables. It's gonna, gonna be going and adding remote RPI. There's no need to add the, um, the project because it's in the default project. I'm just adding C2 and C3 that way. Again, if I just run against local, it's only gonna be selecting those two and there's not gonna be anything new going on. But now if I run against RPI, it's gonna be remotely talking to that LexD to similarly install Apache now in both of those instances. And then making sure they're running. Obviously Ansible can do far, far more than this. Um, you can also within the same playbook specify um, what should run on what group. So you could totally have a single playbook that runs against both Debian based systems and Red Hat based systems and just the right package manager and do the right thing everywhere in there. Um, or even skipping some tasks for some specific groups or that, that kind of stuff. Um, but this is not meant to be uh, like a full demo of Ansible's capabilities, but just how Ansible can interact with LexD and just how easy it is to, to deploy um, in this case. Apache on top of LexD instances uh, driven through Ansible on a remote system. Okay, Apache is installed in both of them, so the, they should just be running out of the box. Yeah, all good. And now I can also run without the restriction, which will actually run against all four. And just making sure that they're all uh, behaving. So you can see that the local system goes slightly faster, not necessarily because it's local, but just because it's faster than Raspberry Pi. And yeah, everything is all nice and clean. I can go check on the Raspberry Pi that both of the instances do in fact run Apache, but similar to what was done locally, that's gonna be the case. And that's it. Um, that's a look at LexD and how it works with Ansible. Again, this is just one of four different plugins. Um, if you're managing your local system, the other three plugins might work really well for you. Uh, and I'm hoping they're gonna be evolving in a similar way as the connection plugin and will be more use usable for those of us with, uh, with remote servers and projects and slightly more complex uh, LexD environments. Um, this web page on our, on our website on third-party integrations also includes a number of other tools that LexD um, has, inter inter um, has integrations with. So you might want to go through that and see whether um, your tool of choice is on the list and how that works. Or maybe you're missing some of the tools that are that support LexD, in which case uh, either contribute directly to the website by sending us a pull request or letting us know in the comments here or on our forum. Similarly, if you, if you need any help with those, in general, uh, because it's those third party tools integrating with LexD rather than, other, rather than the other way around, you tend to be better served by directly reaching out to those communities rather than, than to us. Um, but like we're always happy to, to help or at least give a few pointers when we can um, for those users um, directly on our forum or here in the comment section. I hope this was uh, useful to you and see you in the next video. Thanks.